What's up, guys? Fat Archon here for another 40k video. Today, I'm going to be ranking each and every Chaos Space Marine Legion to see which ones I consider best for the Praia Nexus era. I'm going to be briefly covering any of their like good enhancements, stratagems, any combos that come to mind. I will say, though, if you guys want more like in-depth on a particular Legion or all of them, I've actually done a series for each and every Legion already. Each of those videos are like an hour long, so if you want the in-depth like combos and, you know, all the info on them, be sure to check some of my backlog. As usual, if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing. Also, I gotta make yet another shout out. It's getting kind of crazy here. So, Organ Lady, thank you so much for becoming a patron. Like, man, it means so much to me. Uh, all you people have been supporting the channel. It means so much to me to see that. I really, really appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart. If anybody else would care to support the channel, I will post a link to my uh, Patreon down below. And of course, you can become a member through the uh, through YouTube as well. Regardless, so like I said, I'm gonna be briefly going over each of these legions. Any like good enhancements, any of that sort of stuff that comes to mind, I'll be sure to bring them up. Uh, now I have to fight my internal biases uh, really, really freaking hard here because I I really love CSM. If you guys didn't know, uh, I will say though. So if I don't rank a particular like legion like as high as you think, that doesn't mean that they aren't good. I'm basically like ranking them against each other. Also, we all have our own play styles. Just because I might say something's like trash or something like that, it doesn't mean it really is. In fact, you want my like tinfoil hat? I think freaking Chaos Cults, I think they're one of the best legions in the game if you run them a particular way. They do have a lot of issues though, so uh, you know, you need like a wild collection to even run it and it would only work for that single detachment and potentially I'm wrong. So like, you know, uh, you know, just keep that in the back of your head. Just because I don't rank like your favorite freaking legion like S tier doesn't mean they're bad. Now I will say if you guys disagree with a particular ranking of mine or you think I'm like overrating something, whatever the reasons are, by all means, leave a comment below. Not just for me, but for other people to see, man. That way they're getting like multiple points of view. The entire channel's all about like spreading good info, getting people to learn the armies better. So don't just take my word for it. Like, you know, check the comments below, see if somebody else like sparks a good idea in your head. But that out of the way though, we can hop right into it and it looks like we're gonna start with Bellhammer Siege Host, AKA Iron Warriors. This is a hard one to rank, to be honest. Uh, I've seen people on both sides of the fence. I've seen some people say that they're terrible, they're one of the worst legions in the entire book, and I've seen other people say, no, they're really competitive, you guys are just like running wrong. I would think they're somewhere in the middle, truthfully. Uh, definitely not the worst, probably not like the most competitive either. For their, uh, for their detachment rule, they got Iron Fortitude. In the shooting phase, when an enemy unit targets one of your models, if the strength is higher than the toughness, then you subtract one from the wound roll. Where that's really gonna pop off is like gunline armies. So if you guys like shooting, this is probably like a good choice for you. Uh, screens, so like Chaos Cultists, that sort of stuff, probably have extra value here. Now what's funny is I'm showing you the vehicles. Where this is especially useful though, it's gonna be infantry. Anything with like a lower toughness, obviously is gonna like take more advantage of that. Where it's especially good too is like Terminators. So yeah, if you guys are like a big Terminator fan, this is probably one of the better legions you could pick. You guys gotta think too with Pariah Nexus, like being resilient has like extra value. They have a few missions that are all about like staying alive. So burden of trust, you gotta guard an objective. At the end of your opponent's turn, if you're still guarding an objective, like you score extra points. They got purge the foe, so they're trying to kill you. So there is like extra value related to the whole like being resilient. For enhancements, they got some pretty fun ones, honestly. So first of all, they got Bastion Plates. So this is Lord only. Basically, once per battle round, you can blank out damage. Obviously, on a, on a uh, Terminator Lord, this is going to be especially valuable. He already has the damage on his own. Terminators are already extra resilient, like baseline. And then this detachment, they're like extra, extra resilient. Ooh, they also got Warp Tracer. This is one of my favorite ones for this Legion. Basically, in the shooting phase, you choose the enemy unit that you'd hit with one or more of those attacks until the end of the phase they can't benefit from cover. With the Terminator Sorcerer, you already got Death Hex on top of that, so you get uh, minus one AP for your entire army to take advantage of. You throw on Ignore's Cover, that's sort of like minus two AP. That's a pretty big deal because one of the issues with Iron Warriors is that they don't have that many ways to like, boost their damage output. Now, you are working with like the CSM Codex here. We already have like hyper high like damage. So, you know, you got to weigh like, is, you know, is it really like that big of a deal that they don't like boost it even higher? Granted, that is definitely debatable. They also have Ironbound Enmity. I kind of like this one. So when you're on objective, you get plus one to wound. I like that on like uh, Lord Discordant. So if you're like me, if you're one of those nuts who are looking for ways to run them, like that's actually one of the better stratagems you toss on the guy. For stratagems, they got some pretty good ones. So first up, they got Steadfast Determination. Basically, in the shooting phase, you get a five up feel no pain. On like uh, something like a Corn Lord of Skulls, like hot diggity dog, man. That's basically like a 50% wound boost. So this guy be gaining like 12 wounds on top of it. I think that's incredibly good. They also got Persistent Assailants. So this is reactive. It's in the fight phase. After you are hit, you get to reroll all your hits back in return. If you're below half strength, you get to reroll all the wounds as well. I think that worked really good on like uh, Warp Talons would love it, of course. Possessed, Chosen, that sort of stuff. I would say Terminators, but they can already reroll the hits. I guess if they're below half strength, then it would have extra value reroll the wounds on top of it. 
Last up, they got Siegecraft. This is a really damn good one. So in your opponent's charge phase, you choose one of your units. Until the end of the phase, you get minus two to all of your charge rolls. I've had that come up as like a huge deal. I've had multiple units end up failing their charges, all because of that one single stratagem. I think that's actually like one of the better ones in the entire book. So overall, I definitely don't think they're terrible. Like I mentioned, Pariah Nexus, like being resilient has like has a quality all its own. I think though, if I gotta be honest, I'd probably put them like B minus C plus. Ooh, it's, uh, it's hard to fight my internal biases, but I think I'm going to put them B tier. I know, again, it's like a controversial legion. I know some people are probably going to disagree with that both ways. I be I would love to hear your guys' opinion, though. Am I overrating them or am I underrating them? I think B B minus is pretty fair. I don't think they're terrible, guys. And again, like, you know, they have really good stratagems. They have some pretty okay enhancements. And I'll say it again, the being resilient for Priya Nexus, like, that might be, like, surprisingly valuable especially with your battle line they're going to be taking advantage so long as like, they aren't like in melee or whatever your battle line is going to be like extra resilient be able to hold down those objectives do their secondaries and their actions i think there is some like hidden value associated with that next up we got veterans of the long war aka black legion so this is one of my favorite legions in the entire book they have really good stratagems some pretty good enhancements and then their attachment rule is like great so for their detachment rule, they got Focus of Hatred. Basically, at the start of your command phase, you choose an enemy unit. Until your next turn, your entire army gets to reroll all their hits versus that target. When you're working with, like, Vindicators, Predators, Forge Fiends, Corn Lord Skulls, like, those are all great. Then you throw in, like, maybe, like, Warp Talons, dude, rerolling all your hits, all your wounds. Like, that's pretty money. My favorite part of it, though, is that's universally useful. So you could be fighting, like, Imperial Knights. Hot diggity damn, dude. Like, that's pretty damn valuable there. Uh, or Cord, it doesn't matter. No matter your opponent, you're always going to get value out of that detachment rule. For enhancements, they have some pretty decent ones. They got Mark of Legend. Once per turn, you can reroll one hit, wound, or saving throw. So if you toss on something like a Demon Prince, a Lord Discordant, maybe just a Chaos Lord, uh, a Terminator Sorcerer, you want to keep him alive, anything with like a two-up save definitely gets value out of being able to reroll it. And it's once per turn, not battle round, so you can do it both your turn and your opponent's turn. I think that's actually a pretty good one. On top of that, they got Eager for Vengeance. So you get to basically fall back, shoot, and charge. That's pretty awesome. And then if you target your Focus of Hatred, you get plus one to hit and plus one to your charge rolls. Yet again, you throw down like a Chaos Lord with like a Chosen Brick, something along those lines. Like that definitely has like a lot of strength behind it. For stratagems though, that's where the guys really pop off. They have some of my favorite stratagems in the entire book. First of all, they got Let the Galaxy Burn. In the shooting phase, you choose one of your units. They get Ignore's Cover and any Torrent Weapons they have automatically get six shots. Now, sadly, you can't use it on Zinch units, so no, uh, no rubrics, but you can use it on Plague Marines. I think they're a fantastic choice for this. You can bring four flamers along, half of which would be anti-infantry two up, the other half anti-infantry four up. So I think that's a powerful little combo there. And even if you don't have Torrent weapons, it's still like universally useful. It's basically plus one AP. Who I think be really good on is uh, Predator Destructors. They have one AP baseline on their main cannon. When you target infantry, you get an additional AP. You toss the Ignore's cover on there. That's essentially minus three AP on your 130 point, like hyper efficient, like shooting unit. I think that's a very powerful way to use it. They also have Bringers of Despair. This is one of the more powerful stratagems in the entire book. It does cost two command points, so it's pretty spendy, but you can give any unit in your army fight first, man. So you toss out Corn Lord of Skulls. He's got it. Warp Towns. They can get it. Possessed. Chosen. It doesn't matter. You name it, they can use it. Where it's especially fun, like really powerful, is you bring Lucius the Eternal with the Brick of Legionaries. He himself has fight first. Suddenly you have two units that your opponent absolutely is not going to want to fight. Maybe you sneak in a Defiler. He has a free counterattack. On your opponent's turn, he is not going to want to charge you. That's like the last thing on earth he's going to want to do. I think that's one of the more powerful combos in the entire book. I think it's like exceptionally strong. On top of that, they have millennia of experience. So essentially you get a reactive move. If your opponent comes within nine inches of one of your mounted or infantry units, you get to move six inches any direction. So you move on an objective, out of line of sight, you move closer to him for a charge, however you want to use it. Those are always powerful, like anywhere you see them. And then last up, they got contemptuous disregard. So basically armor contempt. When the opponent targets one of your units, you subtract one from the AP. Again, that's just like universally useful anywhere you see it. So overall, I think they have like the best like set of stratagems for any Legion. Definitely like adds to their power. I think they're especially good for like newer players. Maybe like getting familiarized with like CSM and how they play. I don't think you can go wrong with uh, with Veterans of the Long War. So overall, truthfully, I think they belong just like solid A tier, man. Potentially with the double fight first, maybe A plus, maybe even S tier. But again, they're just like good on in like so many aspects. They cover every single base that you need to cover. That set of stratagems is like exceptional. Now, they are CP starved, so that is something you got to worry about. And some of the rules do clash with some of the other units. So, like, Abaddon, he already gives you, like, reroll all the hits. Uh, Terminators, they already have reroll all the hits. So, there are, like, certain aspects that, like, don't mesh that well. But, again, I think they're just overall one of the most solid. Like, they cover every single base they need to. I think they're fantastic, especially if you're, like, trying to get familiar with CSM or you just want a straightforward, like, detachment to bring your next RTT. 
Next up, we got Deceptors, aka Alpha Legion. So these guys have a fantastic detachment ability. One of my favorites, honestly. Basically, before the game starts, you can choose up to three cultists and three legionaries and give them infiltrate. What's beautiful about that is that goes on to the characters as well. You can't do epic characters, but like generic characters, they can gain it too. So you can get like your master executions, you can get your uh, chaos lords, like any of them, like right in your opponent's face. That's pretty awesome. Where they especially shine. I think this is like the most important thing to bear in mind with these guys. Pariah Nexus, man. Pariah Nexus is all about actions and like positional play. Like a boatload of the secondaries and even some of the primaries are all about that. Behind enemy lines, engage in all fronts, air denials, all the actions, containment, like all that sort of stuff, man. I think being able to like infiltrate six different units wherever you need them to be, huge deal. Don't forget too, you can like screen out your opponent from doing that as well. So it is like there is like a lot of strength hidden behind that. For enhancements, they have one of my very favorite of all of 10th edition. So, Soul Link, only 5 points. Basically, at the start of the command phase, you can steal the ability from another generic infantry character. So maybe you got, like, Master Executions, you infiltrate them up the board, you got lucky, you went first. Well, I'm just gonna borrow the, uh, plus 1 Strength, Attacks, Armor Pin, and Damage from the Chaos Lord. Don't mind if I do. Maybe you got Master of Possession, he's in Reserves. Well, you're gonna borrow his plus 1 to charge if you need it. Like, dude, it's so freaking beautiful. It's, like, army-defining. Only 5 points. The only regret I have, the only, like, downsides that you can only bring at once. I think GW knocked it out of the park with the Soul Link. I think it makes, like, Deceptors, like, really unique and really fun in that regard. They also have Cursed Fang, so essentially you get plus one armor pin and precision in melee for one of your characters. Yet again, you can put that on like Chaos Lord, but using his plus one damage ability, like holy cow man, he should be shredding characters left and right. They also have Shroud of Obfuscation, I love saying that word. You can give one of your characters Stealth and Lone Operative. So if you have a Jump Lord, he'd be perfect for it, and otherwise you can put on anybody, man. Even, even like Master Possession can make use of it, he's like relatively cheap, that wouldn't be that bad a choice. Uh, again, with Pariah Nexus, that'd be huge. There's certain secondaries where you need to do actions in your deployment zone and in No Man's Land, so you just keep him in either one of those, man, and he'd basically be like invulnerable. For stratagems, they have some really fun ones, so detonator. Basically, when an enemy unit with the Deadly Demise ability dies, you make it automatically go off. It doesn't work on Titanic, sadly, but there's plenty of options to do like D6 mortal wounds. What's awesome too, maybe doing like a mirror match, so Soulforge Warpack and Abaddon Castle, something like that. They're gonna have to be damn careful with how they position themselves. And even if you only hit something that does like D3 mortal wounds, if I'm hitting four, five, six, like sky's the limit units, you best believe I'm gonna be spending that one CP. On top of that, they got from all sides. So basically, in the charge phase, for each other friendly unit that uh, charged that turn, you can get up to plus three to your charge rolls. So obviously, Warp Talon's gonna love it. Maybe you got Possessed with a Master Possession, they get plus four in that case. Maybe you got another character with like Chosen and a Master Possession, you'd steal his plus one, get plus four to your rolls. Like, all of those are obviously like incredibly powerful. They also have a pick them off. So if you target a unit below its starting strength, you reroll all your hits. If they're below half strength, you reroll all the wounds as well. That's obviously like pretty powerful for like finishing off units. And then lastly, they got scrambled coordinates. So this is an anti deep strike, anti like reserves 12 inch bubble. Again, if you got a lone operative character, that is like beautiful there. So maybe you're doing the jump lord. So he has his like uh, shroud of obfuscation <laughs> uh, or you could even do like cypher or whatever. They basically become invulnerable to any sort of reserves. Maybe you infiltrated a blob of cultist at the start of the game and your opponent's trying to get around you. Nope, denied. I'm gonna spend the one CP. I definitely think Scramble Coordinates is like incredibly powerful and they're the only Legion in the book that has it. So overall, I actually really like the Deceptors. Uh, again, for the Pryo Nexus, I think they really had some play with those Infiltrators. That said, they do have some downside, so they're incredibly infantry focused. Like pretty much every single stratagem and every single enhancement only works on infantry. So do be careful there. I think too, you gotta be like, infiltrating definitely takes some skill. It's not something you can like willy nilly just do. Certain army is going to love you putting them in their face. That's just like free movement for them. And then they're just going to wipe out like a third or half of your freaking army, man, right on the first turn. So you do got to be careful there. Speaking of like getting wiped out, yeah, man, you know, obviously being infantry focused, I do think they're a little fragile. That said, overall, I think they're pretty good. I think they're better than, uh, than a lot of people think. I'm not sure. I think it depends on the general, to be honest, like how high they go. For now, though, I'm going to put them top of B tier. I could maybe see, if you're like a really good general, I could see him even up to like A plus tier or something. If you're not a good general, I could totally see him going down to like C, maybe even D. But yeah, I think overall, they're, they're like, yeah, they're pretty solid, pretty good like B tier. Definitely an army you want to like practice with, though. All right, next up, we got Chaos Cults. So this is uh, this is definitely a fun one. Uh, I told you I got my tinfoil hat theory that they're actually excellent, but we'll get to that in a bit. 
for uh, for their detachment rule. They got desperate devotion in the move or the charge phase. You make a desperate pact. If you do, you get plus two inches to your movement until the end of the phase. If and you get it regardless if you pass or fail. If you do fail though, you take D three mortal wounds. Now remember, this is on top of your dark packs, so potentially you'd be killing more of your own guys than like the enemy does. Also, it's move or charge phase. So if you wanted both of those, you'd be having to do it twice. That definitely adds up, especially when you have like crappy leadership. Now you can fix that up by attaching a character, but that kind of adds to the expense. So that's definitely like a bit of a downside. Also, it doesn't work from reserves, which is just terrible. I hate that so much. Uh, Felgor Beastman, man, I want to run them. They're beautiful models, but GW just does everything in their power to make these guys terrible. For enhancements, they're pretty expensive, but they do have some fun ones. So, Incendiary Goad. When you're below starting strength, which will be easy to do, considering your detachment rule, you get plus one to your strength. If you're below half strength, you get plus one attack. On something like a, a Curse Cultist, which could be a common theme here, they definitely get, like, buffed up from that. So, I do like that one. They also have Amulet of Tainted Vigor. In your command phase, you can revive D3 dead models. So, again, a Curse Cultist, man, especially the Torment. Potentially, you bring back nine wounds worth of models in your command phase. That definitely has some, like, strength behind it. And then lastly, they got Warped Foresight. So Dark Apostle or Dan model, the bearer gains scouts. Now, I do have a question about that with the Dark Commune specifically. Dark Commune, only one of those models is a character. The other four are not characters, if I'm not mistaken. So with the scouts rule, the entire unit has to have scouts in order for it to like work. So I don't think it like work on the uh, Dark Commune at all. I think it only really work on the Dark Apostle. That said, you can attach them to a Curse Cultist and suddenly the entire unit gains the scouts. Because uh, Curse Cultists have it like baseline. If you attach a character, they lose it. Warp Foresight lets you add it back on. So definitely something that you might consider using. Is it worth the 20 points or whatever? Like, yeah, you know, that's debatable, but uh, still kind of a fun one at the very least. For stratagems, that's where these guys really do pop off. So first of all, they got Chosen for Glory. Basically, you make a desperate pact, and you get reroll hits, like no matter what. If you pass your desperate pact, then you get to reroll the wounds as well. I'm going to be saying this a lot. So basically, this, this entire detachment revolves around the Accursed Cultists. You want to run like three bricks of them if you're able to. But you can reroll all hits, all wounds. You got Dark Commune attached to them, so they get advanced and charge. Plus one hit, plus one wound. Like, hot diggity damn, dude. For 170 points, you're getting, like, one of the killiest units out there, at least for, like, points efficiency-wise. Now, you will be killing yourself even more, but you guys are going to see that that's, like, a common theme throughout all these uh, stratagems. Uh, they also have Crazed Focus. So, you, again, you make a Desperate Pact, and you get plus one AP. So, really good there. If you pass the Desperate Pact, you also get plus one strength on top of that. Yet again, Curse Cult is going up to strength what? That'd be like strength five, maybe strength six. Uh, maybe you include the Incendiary Goad on top of that. Like, yeah, you start pushing that up really freaking high. But again, you're murdering yourselves as you go through. That said, the Torments are three wounds, so you do have like a little bit of leeway there. But if you're like rolling high on those, like, ouch, dude, that's going to hurt. They also have Reckless Haste for Advance and Charge. That's pretty valuable like anywhere you see it. Not working like anyone. Even like the Felgor Beastman will like having that. Uh, they also have Infernal Sacrifice, so this one's interesting. No matter what, you take D3 Immortal Wounds, and you get plus one, uh, plus one attack. If you pass your test, you also get plus one strength. I believe that one gets silly, because if you fail the Desperate Pact, you're taking two D3 Immortal Wounds. So definitely be sure you got a character attached to that one. And then last of all, one of my favorite ones, they got Mortal Thralls. So this is like a flavor win. Basically, this works on a Heretic Astarte, so you have like, I don't know, Land Raider, Corn Lord of Skulls, a Forge Fiend, something like that. You could have them uh, set up like middle of the table, and then you have a group of cultists next to them. Whenever your opponent attacks you, they don't even roll a wound, they just automatically do the damage characteristic as mortal wounds to the, uh, to the cultist squad. Now, that is kind of silly, because if they're hitting you with like anti-tank, which of course they would, let's say they roll hot on like one of their last cannons, they roll like seven damage or whatever, that would kill seven models right away. So it wouldn't take like a bunch of shots, potentially just one or two shots from their anti-tank would like wipe out your mortal thralls. So that is kind of questionable how good it is. But again, from like a fluff point of view or like a, yeah, like a fun perspective, I think it is like pretty awesome there. Overall, though, these guys are easily, like, the worst attachment in the book. They're, they're constantly trying to kill themselves, from their detachment rules, to enhancements, to their stratagems. Like, everything is just killing you. I wouldn't be surprised if, like, first turn, you kill way more of your own models than your opponent does. Their enhancements are, like, wildly overpriced. I don't know why GW did that. Like, all of them are, like, 20, 25 points for some silly freaking reason. And also, you need a wild collection to, like, run these guys properly. Now, that said, though, so I still got my, my tinfoil hat theory. I think if you run them, like, full-on horde mode, you can as many models as you possibly can. It'd be over 260. I think it's, like, 270 models, something silly like that. Not every army you face is going to be able to deal with that, at least before you outscore them. That's the whole thing. You go wild, like, first three turns. Sure, maybe they table you, like, after that, but it doesn't matter, man. You're so ahead on the score that, like, you automatically win. So I do wonder if they're, like, secretly one of the best armies in the entire game. That said, though, we know where these guys are going. They go straight to trash tier. 
I wish I could put them higher, like, from a flavor point of view and, like, a fun perspective, for sure, guys. Like, don't don't let me, like, hold you back from, like, playing them on the table. The Accursed Cultists could be, like, wild good while they stay alive. So, you know, they're not, like, the worst thing ever, but competitively, yes, they really are. Ooh, all right, next up, we're on to my favorite Legion in the entire book. So, I'm a Demon Engine Nutso, if you didn't already know. Soul Forge War Pack. These guys have one of, if not the, best attachment rules in all of 10th edition. So they have Debt to the Soul Forge. Each time a Demon Vehicle uses its Dark Pact, it can invoke its contract. If it does, you subtract one from your leadership, but you gain plus one to wound and shooting, and plus two attacks in melee. So this is incredibly, insanely, like, wildly strong. First of all, it works both shooting and melee, so that's awesome there. But I love, though, my favorite part makes every single one of your demon engines basically makes them anti-everything. Even your Venom Crawlers, at worst, is going to be winning like a 5, and that's great when you have 12 2 damage attacks going out. That's incredibly strong. Forge Fiend's going to love it, obviously, especially if you bring, like, Vashtor along. That puts them up to strength 11, so that's a big break point. Suddenly, you're wounding, like, toughness 10 and below on 2-ups. Maybe bring, like, a Lord Discordance, so you can reroll wound rolls of 1. You'll see here in a moment that you can add the enhancement, so you'll reroll all your hits. But the Dark Packs, you're having over 100%, like, hit rate. Then, you have the, uh, wounded on 2s, reroll 1s, you have a 100% wound rate. Both of those combined, like, hot diggity damn, dude. That's, yeah, that's incredibly strong. Obviously, Corn Lord Skull is gonna love it. And you guys will see with the stratagems, there's ways to make even, like, your normal vehicles, make them, like, Demon Engines too. For, uh, for enhancements, these guys have, like, hands down the best one in the entire game. I'm not even sure it's, like, up for debate. So, Tempting Addendum, it is 25 points, but you get to reroll all hits in a 3-inch bubble. You throw, like, Dark Packs on top of that. You throw the Hellbrood in there. You throw whatever little buffs. In fact, if you guys watch my full, like, Soul Forge War Pack review, I believe you can get up to 8, and I'm sure I'm forgetting, like, a bunch of, like, buffs. You can get up to 8 buffs, most of which affect, like, multiple units. That is, like, the most powerful, like, buff-like sandwich you could possibly get in the entire game. Man, it really bumps these guys up a notch. Obviously, you're gonna do like a castle build, so you're basically gonna like live around your warp smith who has a tempting addendum. What's cool about that, he has a lone operative, so suddenly he's like super duper ultra hard to get to, and he's surrounded by ultra killy like demon engines. So even if you do get close to him, you're gonna get punished as hell. I freaking love it. On top of that, they got Forge's Blessing, so this can go on to anybody, maybe being cool, bringing the Lord Discord and whatever. But, out to 12 inches, you can give a vehicle a 6-up Feel No Pain. That's like a 20% boost. Yet again, you throw down like Corn Lord of Skulls, that's pretty valuable. Maybe you're bringing along like a, a Vindicator, his 2-up save, and the Toughness 11. Like, he's definitely gonna love that. So, already, we're starting off with bangers here. We got one of the best, like, enhancements in the game, and then just, like, a really good one. What about their stratagems, though? So, as usual for CSM, these guys pop off there, too. To start off, you got Desperate Pledge. So, in the shooting or the fight phase, you give one of your units plus one AP. That's a huge deal. Like, we're already, like, super ultra killy. Now, we're, like, ultra, ultra, ultra insanely killy on top of it. Definitely love that. You got a really good one. If we didn't have this, we would definitely struggle. We got Unstoppable Rampage. Basically, in the move or the charge phase, you can move through walls. You can ignore walls. So that is so good in, like, so many ways. First of all, in 10th edition, like, terrain is, like, a big deal. Terrain is everywhere, thank God. You used to be, like, playing a bowling ball, but not anymore. But now you can run, like, anything, man. You run Defilers. They won't have, like, nearly as big of issues as they used to. Corn Lord of Skulls used to be a pain in the ass. Maybe you got, like, Greater Brass Scorpion of Corn. Maybe you're, like, a super baller like that. Uh, <laughs> he won't have any issues. Mauler Fiends are gonna love it. You can also use it on any vehicle. And I am, in fact, I have totally used it on a Vindicator before. That wasn't even a demon yet. I've used that to get line of sight on shooting. You can also use it to hide behind terrain, and then when you're ready to go out, you can jump out there and like, yeah, ignore the terrain. It's a huge deal. If we didn't have that, we would have struggled way more. Uh, they also have Predatory Pursuit. Basically gives you reactive move. However, you do have to move as close as possible to the unit that like triggered it. So it is like, it's not nearly as good as most reactive moves, but still it's valuable to have. Uh, one of my favorite ones, you got Demonic Possession. So basically, you use it at the start of your command phase, and uh, a normal vehicle becomes a demon vehicle until the end of the game. Most stratagems only last like one turn. Nope, that one lasts the entire game. So suddenly, your Vindicator, you make him a demon. Your Predator, you make him like a budget Vindicator. What's cool too, they can be reserves and you can still use it. Like, I think that's pretty powerful there. And then lastly, they have one of the strongest stratagems in the book. That Whenever you see it, this is like incredibly powerful. So, Feeding Frenzy, you know, force a desperate escape, and if they're battle shocked, they get minus one to their test. So just baseline, a third of their unit just poofs uh, whenever they try to fall back. If they're battle shocked, half their unit disappears. And here's a really fun combo for you guys. If you combo in, or if you bring in Fiends of Sanesh, they have a six inch aura that gives minus one to desperate, uh, desperate escapes. Suddenly they're losing three quarters or 66%. They're losing three quarters of their freaking unit, man, for a single command point. That is one of 
the most powerful stratagem in the game, I am very tempted, like, yeah, throw fiends in my list and just, like, build my strategy around doing that. Lock up units that don't want to be locked up and, like, try to force them to fall back. Obviously, they won't want to, so you just let them get, like, torn up by, like, Mauler fiends. I think that's one of the most powerful, like, combos you could possibly run. So overall, this is easily one of the best attachments in the book, and probably the one of the best in the game, in, in my opinion. They're going straight to S tier. We'll see how they compare to the other ones, we'll find out shortly, but when you consider that, yeah, their attachment rule works both in shooting and melee, that's pretty huge. You get the reroll hits, that's gigantic. You make any vehicle you want demon, like that's huge. Your, uh, your main buffer has lone operative. Like, is there a single theme not to like about these guys? Alright, I guess there is, actually. So, so actually, there really is. So... First of all, they're expensive as hell, both in real life and in points. In real life, if you want to run like six freaking fiends, so three Molly fiends, three forge fiends, be prepared to spend some money. And then even points wise, same deal. You can only fit in so many demon engines in your list. Also, I think you might struggle with uh, with doing actions in Pariah Nexus unless you're smart and you bring action monkeys. And I think it's ultra, ultra, ultra important that you guys bring those for your list. What I myself have been doing, I've been bringing a bunch of raptors and, of course, just like cultists. And again, I just have like cheap, disposable, little action monkeys. I don't really care what happens to them so long as they're getting me victory points and I don't have to use like a 200 point model to do my actions for me. I think it's very important that you guys like fit those in as much as you possibly can. Uh, also, too, with the minus one leadership, you're going to be hurting yourself a fair deal. I believe you have a little under like a 40% chance of failing, so it's not going to like always happen, but it will come up from time to time. And when it does, potentially be doing four mortal wounds to yourself. If you're doing a forge fiend, you're being like crazy, you're doing the devastating wounds ability or whatever. You could potentially, it'll be extremely rare, but potentially you do 11 wounds to yourself in a single phase. Like, that's pretty wild there. All that aside, though, yes, I believe these guys, like, they belong S tier, man, like, easily. They just have, like, a universally useful attachment rule that works no matter what's going on, both shooting and melee. They're on T10 average. On, on average, it'll be toughness 10, maybe even higher profiles. What is there not to like about these guys? I do think you'll be seeing them a lot of tournaments going forward, so uh, make sure you bring some anti-tank. All right, next up, we got Dread Talons, a.k.a. Night Lords. So these guys are, uh, they're like they've always been. They revolve around leadership. Their ability is Terror Descends. Basically, they have a 12-inch aura that causes minus one leadership when taking a Bow Shock test. On top of that, in your opponent's command phase, if they're below starting strength and within 12 inches of you, they also have to take another Bow Shock test then. So obviously, Bow Shock isn't like the most reliable thing on the planet. But the thing is, if you're forcing it so often, you're bringing like, uh, you're bringing like Raptors, obviously. You bring Noise Marines, you bring Cultist Firebrands. You can force it like 10 plus times in your own turn. And that's before your opponent has to take it if they're like below starting strength. When it goes off, not only are you stopping them from, like, scoring, but you stop them from, like, using their stratagems, both offensive and defensive. So there is, like, there is some value behind it. With Pariah Nexus here, you should be able to stop them from doing, like, as many actions and just, like, scoring in general. So I do, again, I think it's, like, a viable strategy. Normally, like, Bioshock is, like, the worst way to possibly go. With, uh, with Dread Towns, I think it's, like, actually viable. For enhancements, they have some really good ones, actually. So the first one I like a lot, Warp Fueled Thrusters. So this is Jump Lord only. And basically, it gives you uppy downy. So you get to, at the end of your opponent's turn, you get to go into reserves. That has a bunch of uses. Uh, first of all, you can get, you know, you can do a turn one deep strike. That's a huge deal. Maybe Drew, like, behind enemy lines or something like that. It is possible to use. It, uh, it also lets you use your screaming descent stratagem, like, multiple times. We'll get into that here in a moment. But that's, like, a key stratagem for this attachment. One of, like, the most important ones. And then also, you can just, like, play mind games on your opponent. So you, like, deploy him on the board off to one flank or something, and then your turn comes around. Nope, I'm actually going to go over there. I think uh, for sure. That's probably my favorite one, and honestly, it's almost an auto-include. I would probably include that with every single list I wrote. Uh, another one that I like a lot is Night Shroud. So this goes on a Jump Lord or a Foot Lord, and what it does, it gives the entire unit stealth. Stealth is actually one of, like, the most powerful, like, debuffs in the game, in my opinion. So if you're fighting, like, Tau, man, they normally hit on fours, now they're on fives, that's a pretty big deal. And then orcs, like, shooting at you, not that that's, like, a super common thing, but they go to five to sixes. Like, they might not even want to, like, shoot at you at all. That also, I would almost include, uh, almost, like, consider an auto-include. Not quite, but if you have, like, the points left over at the end, like, hell yeah, I'd toss that in there. The last one I like a lot is uh, Eater of Dread. In your command phase, you roll a d6 and you gain one command point on a 5-up and you add one to your test for each Bowshocked unit on the battlefield. It's not going to be that wild to have like two, three, maybe even more than that, like Bowshocked enemy units. So for sure, you should be gaining a lot of command points. In fact, these guys might gain like the most of any of the legions. For stratagems, they have some like incredibly good ones actually. So Screaming Descent, this gives you a three inch deep strike, which is such a big deal, man. I play demons a lot. I you, uh, like I can't tell you how many objectives I've like stolen from people who like don't understand how to screen a three inch deep strike. That's a huge deal there. On top of it, after you come down in deep strike, you can force a battle shock on an enemy infantry within six inches. 
again. Uh, you know, you want to be forcing the test left and right. Not only are you like, yeah, forcing a battle shock that hopefully goes off, you can also spread your 12 inch bubble to like most of your opponent's army. Maybe it's turn three or something, so most of them are like below starting strength at that point. That's actually a pretty big deal. I think that's like a key stratagem for these guys. Next up, you got Pitiless Hunters. So in the shooting phase, one of your infantry can reroll all the hits and all the wounds if you target a unit that either battle shocked or under half strength. Obviously, Havocs are going to freaking love that, dude. Havocs with like their Reaper chain cannons or just last cans, whatever it is, they're going to get like a lot of use out of that. The last one I also like a lot, Merciless Pursuit. Basically, when a unit falls back, you get to charge it. So if you lock something up with like Warp Talons, something like that, Unless I have a really high movement, they're like basically like permanently stuck there with you. You know, like, you're not stuck here with me, I'm stuck here with you. Oh, damn, I got that backwards. Either way, they're like stuck with you. Overall, I think these guys can be good, but they still struggle with the fact that they're like relying on Battle Shock. Like, the, the like least reliable thing in like 40k. Unfortunately, like, you really can't count on it. My first game I had with these guys, I don't think my opponent failed like any Battle Shock test. I think maybe he failed like one or two like over the entire game. And it's basically like a non-issue. That was really like eye-opening to me for like, you know, like, wow, I really anticipated that to be better. That said, there will be certain matchups. And, may and maybe I was just unlucky, by the way. Yeah, that might have just been unlucky. And for sure, you'll have certain matchups where it's, dude, it's just like left and right non-stop going off. And in that case, it's almost like an auto win. Your opponent's going to be like, they're not going to be able to score like anything. You're going to be able to flip objectives like left and right. You get to use all of your stratagems, all that sort of stuff. That said, uh, that's actually a good point. So the fact that your stratagems, like, they have to be battle shock to actually get your use out of it. That's a pretty big handicap versus, like, the other legions. There's a lot of, like, issues going on here. That said, I think if you're a especially good pilot and you make a really good list, I think you can take these guys pretty far. If you're taking advantage of the Noise Marines, the Cultist Firebrands, if you're using your Raptors all sneaky deaky, all that sort of stuff, I definitely think you like can take them like again pretty far. I think you can like definitely win like RTTs with these guys. So uh, overall, sadly, I hate to do it, but I think C tier. I think they belong in C tier. I don't think they're terrible. They definitely don't go in trash. I don't think they're D tier even. Even even like baseline. Even if you're like a newer player or whatever. And I know there's a lot of like Night Lord fanatics out there. Please don't come after me in the night. Uh, but yeah, I think C tier. If you're a really good pilot, for sure, you'd probably get them up to like A tier. Maybe even higher. I don't know. Time will tell. With Pry and Nexus here and like the importance of doing actions and all that stuff. Maybe it's like way better than like I even thought. But yeah, I think they go like C. Maybe C plus something like that. Ooh, all right, next up, we're on there. Renegade Raiders, aka Red Corsairs. You guys are probably waiting on this one. So these guys have what's, like, universally accepted as one of, uh, if not the, like, best attach and boost in all of 10th edition for, like, almost any army. So they have Raiders and Reavers. Basically, if you target an enemy unit that's on an objective, you get plus one armor pin. That is such a big deal for, like, CSM especially. We had pretty, like, middling AP overall. Possessed or AP1, Chosen or AP2. Well, you boost it up to 3, maybe even 4 if you bring, like, Terminator Sorcerer or something like that along. That is such a big deal, man. That is such a giant boost. The fact it's, like, restricted to only being on objectives, that's not really, like, a restriction at all. I want to clear you off those anyways. The whole name of the game is, like, scoring more than you, not necessarily killing. Although, obviously, killing you off the objective how I'm going to do it. But I don't even, like, see that as a handicap. That is, like, oh, man, it's such a beautiful, like, rule right there. On top of that, they get freaking assault on all of their shooting weapons. That's going to come up literally every single turn, man. When I was learning Renegade Raiders, uh, I would forget it all the time. And I would constantly think, oh, man, you know, I'm just out of line of sight. I'm just a couple inches out of range. Oh, that's right. I can advance and shoot. That is such a big deal right there. It's almost as good as the armor pin boost, like just on its own. Now, sadly, Pry and Nexus did change it, so you can't do actions anymore. But again, it's still like you got shooting units. So maybe your Havocs, who normally walk slow, they only got a five inch move, they're going to love it. Obliterators normally move four inches, they're going to freaking love it. Even your vehicles, again, man, even if you move really far, that extra couple inches, you'd be surprised like how often that like comes up. For enhancements, they got some damn good ones, dude. So first of all, they got Mark of the Hound. Basically, gives scouts to the bearer and his unit. If you didn't already know, if you're inside a transport and every model inside the transport has the scout's ability, it gets transferred to the uh, to the transport itself. So you got six inch scouting freaking rhinos, man. I can't tell you how beautiful that is. That's one of like the more powerful like themes you can like start the game off with. Also, my favorite part about it, you can put on Lord Discordant. Uh, by the way, that's probably like my favorite thing about this attachment. You can buff the hell out of Lord Discordants. They love mounted and they love transports. That's like the two big things about Renegade Raiders. Another enhancement that works fantastic on the Lord Disco, or anybody, even a Demon Prince, even like a Chaos Lord, whoever, they have a Dread Reaver. When you're within 12 inches of the opponent's deployment zone, you can reroll all your hits, all your wounds. You got plenty of ways to get within 12 inches, really not hard. You have like an auto 6 inch, like a auto 6 inch advance, like stratagem, like million ways to get across there, and you got assault on all your weapons, so it's really not like that hard to do. 
for the stratagems, they have some of the best. Some of the best in the book. So, unfailingly obdurate. Basically, armor contempt. So, when you're when the opponent targets you, you subtract one from the uh, armor pin. That's a big deal whenever you see it. It's only a single CP here. It's a, a battle tactic as well. So, with your Chaos Lord, you basically be doing it like twice a turn. One of those times would be three. I think that's a huge deal. They have a uh, scour and seize. This is unit wide precision, man. So if your opponent comes at you with a character and you got a brick of like chosen, even just like terminators, like whoever, man, they're going to lose that character. Like almost, almost definitely you're going to lose that character, especially like warp towns. They're uh, yeah, they get a lot of use out of that. On top of that, they got Ruinous Raid. This is probably the best one. So when you disembark from a transport with an infantry, of course, you get to reroll all hits, all wounds. Havocs are like a mainstay in all of my lists. I throw two squads of Havocs inside a Rhino. I throw one with the uh, last cannons and the other with the uh, chain cannons. That way I got anti whatever I need. That has come up like every single time. And basically I just like keep like daisy chain them. So I'll drop one out and the next turn I'll put them back in, drop the other one out and just keep using that stratagem nonstop, like constantly. That is one of the very best stratagems in the entire book like hands down uh last of all they got opportunistic raiders so you get to fall back well okay at the end of combat if you're still in engagement range you can fall back better yet if you're not in engagement range you get to make a move so again the lord discordant loves it you know who really loves it though freaking warp towns it's almost broken on warp towns it's one of like the most busted combos in the game right now I'm not sure it's like OP or whatever. It, I mean, it is a little ridiculous. Time will tell, but like GW does. But oh my God, man. Because basically, yeah, you go in, you fight whatever you want, and then you use that strategy to move away and you go into reserves. You basically make yourself like invulnerable. Now, unfortunately, there's no way to like add to your charge rolls. Sadly, you do have Reaver's Haste, by the way, which is very important. Gives you advance and charge. Again, you have Assault Weapons. You have another stratagem that gives you plus six inch to your advance. So if you're willing to drop two command points, you can uh, get plus six inch to your advance and then charge them. Reaver's Haste also, if they're on an objective, gives you plus one to your charge as well. So I take back what I just said a moment ago. Uh, Warp Towns are like auto include times three, uh, <laughs> potentially in Renegade Raiders. It's one of like the most like busted and best like stratagems out there. So we know where these guys are going. They, uh, yeah, dude, they belong in S tier. I think, unfortunately, I think they even outdo, like, Soulforge Warpack. When you consider they get not just one, but two freaking incredibly useful and, like, powerful detachment abilities, yeah, dude, they, they belong right there. Now, what's funny to me, currently, as of, like, recording this video, they have a lower win rate than both Soulforge Warpack and Packbound Zealots. However, I think it's because they're so, like, obviously powerful that, like, a lot of players are flocking to them. And so some of the, like, less skilled players are kind of dragging down their win rate. I was actually trying to think before this video, like, what are some downsides of Renegade Raiders? And truthfully, I can't really think of any. I guess you could say they're, like, especially command point starred, but that applies to, like, every Legion. You could complain that, like, they can only target stuff on objectives, but A, you still get Assault, and B, that's how you win games. So, like, that's not that bad, especially when you consider some of the, like, other detachments and the downsides they have. Yeah, dude, they belong S tier. Maybe they belong in, like, S plus tier, like, their own freaking, like, category. Uh, Renegade Raiders, if you're looking for a straightforward, just, like, ultra-powerful, don't want to think about it, Legion, definitely, like, write up a list with them. Ooh, all right, last up, we got Pact Bound Zealots, aka Word Bears, one of my favorite Legions. So, uh, so these guys get Marks of Chaos. Basically, give each one of your units a specific mark. You can choose between Korn, Slanesh, Nurgle, Zinch, or Undivided. You get either Sustained 5-ups or Lethal 5-ups in the shooting or the fight phase, depending on which one you chose. If you go undivided, you get reroll hit rolls of one, and you unlock like one of the very best stratagems in the entire book. Now they did change this so that you have to pass your Dark Pact. You used to just automatically get it, but no longer does it work like that. Now I will say you still get your Dark Pact on the six up, so you're not completely screwed if you failed it, but it is like technically a nerf. Honestly, I kind of prefer it this way. It like improves the flow of the game. Uh, it was easy to forget, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, I actually like how it is now. When you combine this, though, with, like, rerolls, Hellbrutes, better yet, both of those, hell, uh, you know, rerolls and Hellbrutes, holy shit, dude. This becomes one of, like, the most powerful detachments out there. Abaddon freaking lives here. You would think he loves, like, veterans of Longmore. No, he's a word bear at heart. He hangs out with these guys. You just surround him with, like, three Forge Fiends, three Hellbrutes, six of those, you know? <laughs> uh, you can go melee, surround him with, like, Chosen and Possessed. I believe a GT winning list, like, just did exactly that. He very much, like, boosts these guys to the freaking atmosphere. This was a strong detachment in the Index. It's going to continue to be, like, ultra-powerful going into the Codex. For enhancements, they got some pretty good ones. So to start off, you got Intoxicated Elixir. So this is a Sinesh model only. You almost always see it on Demon Princes. Uh, what this does, it gives a 5-up Feel No Pain. And in the shooting or the fight phase, you force a Battle Shock test on any unit that you hit. Obviously, you're mainly there for the Feel No Pain. That's basically, a 5-up is basically, like, a 50% boost. Demon Princes, uh, it's, uh, you know, arguably, they're a little overcosted. When you give them the equivalent of 15 wounds, all right, suddenly they are worth their points. Same deal for, like, Lord Disco. 
He's not quite as efficient as him, even with that feel no pain, but still like helps make him usable. The other one I kind of like is a uh, Talisman of Burning Blood. This is Corn model only. You get plus one strength and plus one attack. If you do your Dark Pact and you pass it, you get plus D3 to those. I especially love it if you're nutso like me and you want to do the Lord Disco. I especially like it on him uh, because it affects the strength, at least, affects all of his weapons, even the extra attack ones. It's only the attacks characteristic you can't modify. Strength you can, however, and he very much needs, like, all the strength he can get. That way he's winning, like, Marines on twos, that sort of stuff. For stratagems, they have some of the better ones in the book. So to start off, we got Profane Zeal. This is undivided only and basically gives you reroll all wounds. Dude, on something like a Possess, like they go from like a so-so unit that a lot of people complain about to one of the best possible melee bricks you could bring. So you got to think, you get reroll ones from Undivided, sustain six from your Dark Packs, devastating wounds from your Unholy Bloodshed, reroll wounds from the Profane Zeal. Maybe you're cool and you toss in like a Hellbrute. On average, these guys will do 22 devastating wounds to like anybody in the game. They could be toughness like 50. It doesn't matter. You're doing 22 damage to them on average. I don't even think that includes the Hellbrute either. It's like, yeah, it gets pretty nutso right there. It also works especially good on like Forge Fiends. They too have devastating wounds. So basically, yeah, you're looking for anything with dev wounds or like any any sort of ability that like pops off like wounding. Uh, maybe Rubrics would, you know, Rubrics would probably get like good advantage out of it. That is one of the best stratagems in the book. It only costs one CP. It is restricted to undivided units, so that is the downside. But regardless, that makes you like purposely bring at least a few undivided in like pretty much every single list. On top of that, they got Festering Miasma. So if for Nurgle units, you get an 18 inch lone operative bubble, so you can't be targeted from outside 18 inches. And even if you're non-Nurgle, you still get stealth at least, which again, like I mentioned earlier, stealth is one of like the best like debuffs in the game. They also, this one's a flavor win. It's not like that competitive or whatever, but I love it personally. You have Eye of the Gods. Anytime a character destroys a unit, not another character, just a unit in general, uh, you get plus one to your move, toughness, wounds, and then plus one to your attacks, strength, and damage for melee. That's a shitload of buffs for just a single CP. I actually like it a lot. They also have skin shift. So for a zinch, you need to revive a model. Otherwise, for anybody, you get to heal three wounds. That's especially useful on like vehicles. Maybe you're down like below half. You don't want to be taking your battle shocks. Whatever the reason is, you can heal three. And then lastly, they got Torpifying Refrain. So this gives you a fallback in charge. And if you're Slanesh unit, which is who you mainly use this on, you get advance in charge. That's a key stratagem in any and every unit or any and every army that you see it in. Advance in charge is like incredibly important. And especially if you've got like an intoxicating elixir, like Winged Demon Prince, they're definitely going to love that. For overall ranking, ooh, it's hard to say. Did they go in S tier, A tier? Maybe they're trash. Like, uh, <laughs> no, I think I think A plus is a very like fair spot for them. I would put them higher, truthfully, but uh, I don't like that the they have to pass their dark pack to like fully take advantage of their detachment rule. And I really don't like that their uh, in stratagems and the enhancements are kind of locked behind their marks of chaos. That kind of holds them back for me. Now, don't get me wrong, going into Prion Nexus, very much, these guys are going to be winning, like, lots of tournaments. They might end up having, like, the highest win rate, like, overall, time will tell. I'd be very curious what, like, the overall win rates are going to end up being, like, overall for all three of these. All, you know, every detachment period, I'm very curious. But I do think for the top three, I do think, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the, like, literal win rates, so, like, the numbers that GW puts out, all that sort of stuff, if, uh, if Soulforge Warpack and Pactbound end up being ahead of Renegade Raiders. That said, like I said earlier, I think a lot of people are flocking to the Renegade Raiders. They get like all levels of players. If you were to get like the, the best player in the world and they chose one of these, I think they'd probably get the most out of Renegade Raiders. So I will keep them at the very top. Uh, I would love to hear your guys' opinions though. What do you guys think? Like not just of the top three, but just overall. Did I rank anything like wrong? Did I overrate something, underrate something? I would love to hear what you guys have to say. Not just on the lesions, but just like the book overall. How do you guys feel about the Codex? Me personally, I think it's one of the best of 10. It's right there with like Orcs, Sisters of Battle. They only have four detachments. So even though it's like really strong competitively, I would still say the CSM Codex is like the best. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes down as one of like the best books of like 10th edition. Hell, dude, it might go down as like one of the best Codexes of all time. It might be up there with like 3.5 CSM, which was like a wild good time. Like look it up sometime if you haven't already. Uh, either way, this was a fun video to, like, prepare for and, like, create. I hope you guys got, like, a bunch of enjoyment out of it as well. Uh, as usual, if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing. Otherwise, best luck out there, guys, and remember, death to the false emperor.